We're combining the old with the new today, yin and yang. So what I'm talking about here is real estate with blockchain technology. My name is Mike Kubera. You definitely want to stay tuned for this one. Kexcoin. Okay, so what they're doing is providing student accommodation for the blockchain. Now, before you tune out, though, this is going to be quite a long video. Due to its length, I am disabling mid-roll ads. I want you guys to get as much information as possible, soak it all up, and also check out the people on board with this project. If you go to Kexcoin's website, you scroll down, you look at all the partners, and then you see, hmm, Chris, that might be a familiar face to some of you guys. The Cryptoverse, Cryptoversity, ah. Okay, so what I've done with this video, the reason for its length is I've decided, decided to do an interview. I just got off the phone with them, or rather Skype call, and I went ahead and asked some questions for you guys. If you're not able to watch the full video, you might want to skip towards the end where we're able to hear Richard Stott, a managing director for the company, and also Chris speak about their opinions and answer my questions. This project is unlike others you've seen before because not only do they have actual assets and will be going into assets, but they're backed by a company with 39 years of experience. It's a business model that's been proven to work. They've survived through a 2008 recession. They've got around 1,400 to 1,500 apartments currently. Most of them are in the UK. However, they've expanded into Germany recently, building multifamily apartments. This project, though, will be solely focused on students. So pretty much what happens is Kexcoin will be going to fund apartments, which are purchased. They're outright purchased. There's no debt to the banks. You don't have to deal with other parties. And it's real estate contributions, pretty much. The apartments are close to universities, so it's perfect location. Students want to get in. They start renting. Boom. You got money for the next 30 years. This is a long-term project. Like I said, 30 years that we're looking at here. For any participants in this project who actually want to hold out for that long, you will get bonuses at the end. Now, that is interesting because 30 years... Cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin has been around for a couple of years. Actually, Bitcoin had its work started upon by Satoshi Nakamoto, which I made a video about that. We're not sure who he, she, they are. But after 2008, after a lot of people lost money, well, Bitcoin came about. No, it wasn't due to it, but I'm sure it was an inspiring source, of course. I'm putting my reputation on the line here, and I want to be honest with you guys. I'm all for building relationships, and I look at long-term contributions instead of short-term gratification. Whatever you do in your life, whether it's investing your time, your money, your efforts, you have to look at what you want out of life. If you're only caring about today, that's fine, but you still have to look at what's going on over the next couple of years, and you have to be ready for change. With blockchain, there's a lot coming our way, which 90% of what we're not even prepared for yet. With real estate, however, hmm, well, that's been around for thousands of years. Nobles, kings, it works. There's ups and there's downs, as with any other economy. But with this project, there's proof. Also, unlike the other projects I mentioned on this video, the token ICO has not even started yet. So before we start screen sharing and into the interview part, I just want to do a quick little summary of what Kexcoin is and why you should be interested in it. So this is a globally accessible opportunity. It's got a real world use as a commodity. Pretty much with this, unlike with other ICOs where you worry, oh, were the white papers plagiarized? Oh, I don't know about this team member. Do they actually work where they are? Are are they really who they say they are? You're able to call up the partners of this company. You're able to email them. You're able to reach them through Telegram. That's probably the best source. And you're able to speak with them. And they're actual people with an actual experience. Kexcoin is pretty much looking to help out students and also those who are very passionate and obsessed with their jobs. Professionals who are experts in this field. They see opportunities everywhere, the really good ones. They've learned from their mistakes, as we all do. They've capitalized on their returns. And sometimes one of the biggest problems is there's too many opportunities, not enough capital. So that's why Kexcoin came about. It's also in relation to the BitShares platform, which if you guys are familiar with that, it is quite a safe alternative to ERC-20 tokens. And unlike other tokens where you have to wait a little bit like, oh, I send it to a wallet. Okay, I don't know. Am I going to get my tokens now? You have this weird waiting period. As soon as this token goes live, if you really wanted to, you could sell, although that probably wouldn't be the best thing to do. But hey, it's up to you. So now with that out of the way, let's get into it. How are things over in the UK? The UK is pretty good right now. Okay, yeah, I mean, what, what did 
There isn't regulation, but what we've done with ours, we've got the, the top firm in this space, to top legal firm to advisors and one of the worldwide accountants to advisors. And what we've done with our articles of association has made it absolutely real. Any funds that are um, raised are ring-fenced for 30 years. In effect, it's not our money. Um, and that's a big difference. Um, and they were ruled by the, or governed by the rules of the, the UK and the laws of the UK. Uh, and it, it is a really serious business. Um, once the money is in, uh, once the funds have been raised, they're ring-fenced for 30 years. I'm 55, so I'm not going to see the end of it, unfortunately. But what I, w what I will do is make use of that money and carry on our role and our, our vision of affordable student accommodation in the UK. And that's not sort of blithely put. That's actually what we're going to do. And that's what we do now. Right, right. And Hence the reviews. And when you look, at, look us up, we're actually real. And we, I can't fake 3,500 um, 18 to 24 year olds saying nice things both or occasionally getting stroppy but that's that's we, we generally resolve things this was both for online ratings and also I saw that Textual had a bunch of awards and um, landlord of the year 2015 and all that so that's just uh, that that really does help with the, good good uh, yeah, yeah it gives us credibility and, and it's hard won it's um, it's really hard one because um, you're only as good as every year that you start again with the with new students and new tenants. Of course, and I was I was kind of curious. So, in the video that plays on your website on Kexcoin, uh, the chairman, I believe it was, said towards the latter part that looking long term at this, and I'm a big fan of more long term investments instead of quick short term gratification. He mentioned uh, going on to the stock market in the future. So is there a chance that this ICO can go further into an IPO for, for Kexgill or is that just... uh, That's a mute point. There's a legal point there. I'm not sure if it can do. Um, certainly Kexgill group could do. Um, but Kexcoin is a separate company. Um, but Kexcoin will be successful by the fact that we've raised funds um, without banks and we don't, we don't have interest to pay. Notwithstanding that, the, the funds raised are um, ring-fenced for 30 years. Yeah. So, can, I, and, can I add to that as well? Yeah, you can. Yeah, so, so Kexkill Limited, that's Mike's company. That's the one he's talking about floating on the London Stock Exchange. And then there's Kexcoin Limited, which is its own company that will have its own property portfolio built through the funds raised during the ICO. So the relationship between the two companies is that Kexkill have the model, they have the skills in managing properties, sourcing properties, so that's their role. But in terms of the participants, their money will go into the Kexcoin company that will have its own funds, its own property portfolio, its own rental income, and that's how that whole thing will be managed. The only um, reason we talk about Kexgill is because that's backing the project, that's providing the expertise, and that's actually funded the project so far prior to the actual ICO. So when Mike talks about the float, that shouldn't affect Kexcoin at all, really. Okay, okay. So the relationship here is similar to how Ripple is its own company, but then XRP, you know, even if Ripple announces something, it may not fully affect the price of XRP, although it may. It depends how the... Uh, There's a relationship in that the two main directors of Kexgill uh, Limited, which is myself and Mike, are also directors of Kexcoin. Uh, and there are only four directors in Kexcoin. So, I mean, there is, there's quite a big relationship. Okay. But the, the Kexgill floating on the London Stock Exchange, that, that wouldn't necessarily have any impact on Kexcoin at all. Okay, okay. Gotcha. And so... It's 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 good that there's um, Kexgill's got some backing behind. Uh, well, Kexcoin's got some backing behind with Kexgill. I'm kind of curious. What are the so investors can go look at the white papers, of course, and they can go look through the social media. But a large majority of the people going into ICOs, they just look at what immediately is out there, and a large majority will be looking more so at the first couple of months instead of the let's say two years, three years, five years. So I was reading through the FAQ and I understand that there's two ways to earn money from this, well, particularly from the, uh, 
there was a specific name for it. And buyback days? Yeah, okay, so buyback days where Kexcoin will be buying back the tokens. But other than that, you're also able to sell on the markets. Now, for the next couple of months, I know that Kexcoin can't really look at exactly what will happen. But what do you what can Kexcoin do to maximize profits for everybody who's a contributor in this? Chris, is that one for you or do, do sure. you, from from my perspective, we always buy well where there's a capital appreciation um and we'll be straight into rental income. Um clearly the 50% of the profits will be utilized for the buyback which is quarterly which will reduce the supply of Kex coins. And the other 50% is looking to buy more property to make more profit. The um, Articles of Association, which are the most restrictive articles we could actually make, uh, actually state within the company that we can't take a dividend. We are looking at this as a ring-fenced fund and to maximize the value for Kex coin holders. Because from, if we do that, we also maximize the value for ourselves because we've retained 10% of the Kex coins. So we're all, in this, we're all in the same boat, so to speak. Yeah, that's actually a good point. So the, the, the question was, how do we maximize um, the, the profits for Kex coin holders? And Richard kind of did a good job there. Basically, by reducing, making the business as efficient as possible and reducing any drag on the profits, and ordinarily, a company would have a, a drive on its profits through directors' dividends, which isn't going to happen in Kexcoin, right? None of us are going to be taking a dividend from the company. So all the money that goes in to the company through the ICO is going to into property investments themselves or the management of that. So it's um, there's, no, there's no cost to the talent as such because our incentive is to make the coin valuable so that the coins that we have retained for ourselves have some value. That's really... I think that says there on the website there is the only way that the founders are going to make anything out of this is if a Kex coin is worth something because that's the only really skin we have in the game in that regard. Other than that, the company itself, Kex, Kex coin limited will have, um, will keep reinvesting its funds to grow the property portfolio. Um, and that will come from, you know, making good buying decisions. There's that old adage in the property game that you make money on a property when you buy it. So if you, if you spot a good opportunity and take it, that then sets up a profitable um, asset for the long term, both in its capital value going up and also then good rental income. So those would be the three things. There's no drag on the profits in terms of director's uh, salaries or dividends. Um, we've got Kex Gill and Richard's expertise and Mike's expertise in terms of having the eye to spot good buying opportunities, which will then yield good ca capital appreciation and then good rental income. So put all those things together and that will be sort of the, the recipe that should maximize the profitability of Kexcoin and thereby, you know, contribute to the uh, people who participated and supported it in the first place. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. That's, that's a fantastic response. I'm curious about the actual purchasing uh, process with, with the properties. So during the video, I think it was the number 1400 or 1500 apartments that Kextual uh, currently has, right? Yeah, when you think of an apartment, that could be three, that could be a, a cluster where there's five bedrooms. In the UK at the moment, we have around about three and a half thousand bedrooms. We've also got about 300 apartments that we've bought in Germany as well. Um, so we, we, these properties in our blood, that's what we do. We specialize in student accommodation. We were involved in a fund in Germany, which did touch into student accommodation. That fund has been sold. That was a very successful fund. And we're very well aware of how and the importance of regulation and the importance of doing this right. I see the world that with this new world becoming more regulated and hence we're putting the regulations in now to protect the participants. Okay, okay. And so with, with, with the apartments in Germany, I, I looked over, all of these apartments are just for students, correct? Because I, I noticed they were multi... Not, not in Germany. We entered the multi-family market in Germany. We also were the original idea of the Landericus Fund, which did buy some student accommodation in Germany, and that was sold around about 12 months ago. Gotcha. And with that, so what, what are the long-term plans with, let's say, Kexcoin in particular? It's mainly going to be students, however, it's expanding into multifamily. It's really going to be student accommodation. Um, that's 
our focus, that's our lifeline, our, our lifeblood, and that's what interests us. Our offices, which have an office in nine UK cities, in Liverpool, Salford, Leeds, etc., they're fixed offices. We have a student accommodation there. We can buy in those locations, and we have the infrastructure there. There's no extra cost for buying in infrastructure. That's very important. Okay. Okay. We're and not a new entrant. We're 39 years old as a company. I was going to say that's that's my whole point about this isn't a startup. You know, the the actual business model has been proven. This is literally like an expansion uh, in um, leveraging cryptocurrency as a new fundraising method. But all of the things that have made Kexkill successful are being brought over to this. The only thing really new we're introducing is the fundraising model, right? Which is just advantageous for cryptocurrency and the frictionless nature of that and the widespread reach you can have with that um, rather than the laborious process of going through the, you know, the, the old banking system. So that's that's probably one of the reasons why the Kexcoin project probably comes across as less, which we call exciting than the latest, greatest app because everything about what we're doing here is proven. Um, the only thing we're really branching out onto is cryptocurrency as a fundraising method, you know what I mean? So that's the only um, sort of cutting edge thing we're introducing to a, an old and established model. But that's why I think the sweet spot is really. It works, it's so going to get up, money. Well put, Chris. Hmm. Do you think, uh, well, I'm kind of curious, what, what got Kexkill interested in cryptocurrencies apart from seeing that other companies are doing it and oh, it's suddenly an opportunity? What were there any other? Uh, were there any? How do I say it? Were there any other options chosen before this one that you decided? Right. Yeah, Richard. No, we, we didn't. You talk about the the fundraising attempts that you've made, and then I'll take it from there. Well, we, we we are. I mean, we're we're a triple A covenant. We're a, a very good covenant. But the, what it, what is so good about Kex Coin is that we we don't have interest to pay, so we actually make more profits, which actually get. Root taken away from us and reinvested in buying the um, get the Kex coins and destroying them and then reinvested in buying new investments and that keeps us doing what we love which is providing really good quality student accommodation at affordable prices. In the UK in particular um, the majority of recent student accommodation companies have chased the very expensive student accommodation forgetting affordability and it, it's it's the wrong model in that there's only a finite number of um, students willing to pay very expensive rents. We look at the whole picture. We make a very good business out of providing affordable, really good, safe student accommodation. The frustrating thing for me as a director of Keck Skill is not being able to do enough of that. And this is our vision. It is not, and I repeat, it is not something, wow, all this money's coming in. It's not. It's ring fence for 30 years our job is to make the best job the best the best role of making money or make buying property in that 30 years and that will benefit not me but the actual kex coin holders absolutely right so that's that's a great setup so I, I talk about i've been mentioning this online when responding to questions or whatnot i said look, look the problem for richard and mike is not opportunity right that's not what holds them back from fully expressing their talents it's just there's never enough capital to take advantage of all the opportunities so the origin story of kexcoin is that uh, me and simon lee who's the actual founder of the project we went to whole universities together we studied computer science we met in the first year been friends ever since 15 years you know we've our, our whole the only thing we ever talk about is business and technology um, and after university, he founded a, an online retail group and imports products from around the world, sells them online in his online stores and that kind of thing. And that's what we always talk about just on the social visits. And it was on one of my social visits earlier this year where Simon's like, so what, what are you into now? You know? And I was like, well, for the last couple of years, I've been um, doing this cryptoversity thing, teaching people about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, kind of explained it to him. And that wasn't the first time I spoke to him about it either. I think it was just... That conversation pushed him over a tipping point in terms of his understanding. And he was like, oh, okay, this looks really interesting. And then we just left it. It was just one of those conversations that we had about the latest and greatest things we were into. And then two days later, he rings me over and said, Chris, I've got an idea. He said, I think, I think this is 
like a missing piece where we can <laughs> accelerate um, the student property market and all of the opportunities that Richard and Mike have been wanting to take advantage of uh, and that have been hindered by just the laborious paperwork of you know, raising funds in a traditional way. And this is in true alignment with what cryptocurrency is about, you know, bringing opportunities to the masses, to the crowd, anyone with an internet connection type of thing. So we brainstormed it, wrote the white paper, brought it to Mike and, and uh, Richard, refined it, refined it, refined it, and then the project was born from there. So it's, um, like I've said publicly, there would be no way that I would be, me personally, as a public figure, no way would I associate myself this closely with a project if I didn't have that trusted relationship with Simon. And I knew Mike anyway, who's Simon's father, who owns Kexkill. And if Richard had been working with him for many years and proven his mettle time and time again. So um, all of that was the thing that really gave me personally the confidence to get behind this thing. And um, it basically put my reputation on the line, which is which is worth its weight in gold. Of course. Well, I have to say as, as well, for, for us, a 39-year-old company, I'm a chartered surveyor, we had to think very long and hard before we actually you know, got into bed with um, Simon and Chris. Because the reputation to us, and our banking connections and all our connections in the UK, is very important. But we looked at it and we thought, well, actually, this will work. This will carry on the vision. Because it's actually, for us, it's about the property and providing the service. And if we, as a result of that, the coinage value is increased, fantastic, and it will be, because this is a real project as opposed to, because I looked at the, the other, a lot of the other cryptocurrencies and it just, oh, well, what is it? It's all research and development. We actually, we're real. We'll do this from day one. And that's a big difference, and that's, that's the USP for us. Any, any company that tries to come up, it's, well, 90% of them that I saw, most of them, like you said, they don't have anything there. Some companies that have assets and have the team behind, you're able to stand out immediately. And reputation is one of the most important things any individual in business can have. Because as soon as that's ruined, uh, well, you, you're not going to be able to get back contributors or uh, continue Correct. with further projects because people won't trust you anymore. And even if everything goes back again, they'll always be a little bit skeptical about like, oh, five years ago. There was this one incident, and then if we look back seven years ago, there was this other incident. So for all sides of the coin, I guess, <laughs> no pun intended, yeah. but yeah. or maybe uh, everybody cares about their reputation on this one. Everybody wants it to succeed, and that's that's an absolute mission. I yeah, absolutely. I'm curious. So with this, there's 10 million Kex coins. There's not mm -hmm. going to be any more. I uh, just want to go over, because I, I know it's stated on the website, but of course people are going to be overlooking it. There's 10 million Kex coins. 8.5 million of those are going to get sold in the ICO. Uh, right. The rest are getting divided up between... Uh, there was this one little statement. One said contributors. Uh, gosh, let me, let me go back. Let's see. Contingencies. Uh, contingencies. What was uh what what's contingencies mean exactly? Okay, that's like unforeseen expenses. Um, so that's also kind of the part of the marketing budget as well for for the project. Um, so that's five percent of the tokens, five hundred thousand kex coins is set aside for that reason, and then the other ten percent, which is a million tokens, is what's been retained for the founders. But we can't sell those kex coins for another year. No, they are the in ICO. freeze. Yeah, for at least a year. So. That leaves the market free from uh, our involvement entirely, at least for the first year. And everything that we do will be visible. Everything that we do will be on the right. website. Any purchases we make will be on the website, and everything will be open from our accountants to our solicitors to everything we've done is a completely open book for scrutiny. No, no, I was just wanted to say that everything is open for scrutiny. Uh, every bit of expenditure will be accounted for. Gotcha. And um, we're not here to take big salaries. We're not here to take salaries, in fact, and we're not here to take dividends. Right. We're here to do what we we're here to retain the value of Kexcoin to increase the value of Kexcoin because that benefits us. But from my point of view, is to do what I love, and that's carry on building, developing, and providing student accommodation. So, with this project, if we're looking at the long term. What exchanges, uh, if any, have you been in contact with that would be able to list Kexcoin? Because I know that there will be a market where you're able to 
pretty much buy back. And is that going to be on your website or how will that personal market look like? Sure. So we've chosen, or I have recommended and the team have approved the use of the BitShares network to host the, the KexCoin. So KexCoin is a, is a something we've created on the BitShares network. BitShares calls it a user-issued asset. So it's kind of the BitShares equivalent of like an Ethereum-based ERC-20 token. But we've chosen to use BitShares for a number of different reasons. Uh, it's got a built-in decentralized exchange. So I'll come back to that in a sec to answer your question. It's got a processing capacity many hundreds of times that of the Ethereum network. So being being a commentator on cryptocurrency myself, I'd, I'd sat ringside next to a lot of these ICOs that had been done on Ethereum. And seen the what we call problems where extremely popular ICOs basically just jammed the network straight up just because of the amount of demand that was coming in. So I thought, hmm, you know, the the Ethereum's not gonna scale in time for us to do our ICO. So I'm not really prepared to take that risk and upset any of our potential contributors. So with BitShares, it's got a, you know, many thousands of transactions per second it can it can process. And that's kind of important because of the fact it's got a decentralized exchange built in. You don't want to be waiting five to seven seconds for a, a buy or a sell order to go through because the price may have moved and you've missed your opportunity. So from the get-go, at the moment, we've already got people placing orders on the BitShares decentralized exchange in anticipation of the of the sale opening. So that's, um, that's another unique benefit of what we've got here. You don't have to sit there watching the countdown like five, four, three, two, one, send your funds to this address now, like like most ICOs, you can just right now go to the, the BitShares market where KexCoin is going to be trading against Bitcoin. You can deposit your Bitcoin, put your order in, I want this many KexCoins, order, right? And then it puts it on the order book. Then the instant the ICO goes live, we're basically going to put up the KexCoins for sale. So then the BitShares system is going to start matching our sell order with all of the buy orders that already sat there and within a few seconds, literally a few seconds, all the orders that are already there will be filled, like because it has that much of a processing capacity. And not only that, the fees are absolutely minuscule. And it doesn't matter how much you throw at the BitShares network, its, it's processing capacity is that wide that uh, it just will not jam and it will not cost any higher fees. What that also means is that people get hold of their coins instantly. There's none of this end of the ICO and then you kind of a little bit nervous for a week or so before you can actually get possession of the token, the minute your order gets filled, the Bitcoin leaves your account and is replaced by the Kex coins instantaneously because it's being issued on the exchange itself. What that also means is that the, the token is instantly tradable. So if you want to sell your Kex coin five minutes after you buy it, nothing we can do about it because we are literally putting it out on the open market at the moment we have possession of all 10 million coins. So, of course, there's no, there's no buying and selling going on. But as soon as we've issued that first lot of tokens, it's a, it's a free market and people can buy and trade as they, as they see fit. It's been a massive boost to me seeing actually the fact that people are pre-ordering. I think, well, actually, we're doing the right thing. And, and that proves, well, hopefully it proves that the, the values are going to rise. And for these pre-order numbers, can you see exactly how... The can you look at all the details or is that uh... it's entirely public? Yeah, because it's, it's on the open exchange. So anyone that goes to kexcoin.com and clicks on buy kexcoin, they'll go through to the market, they'll see all the orders that have been placed, uh, how many coins people are ordering. You don't know who they are because like, actually you can figure that out by going through the API, which is by the way, but you can see it all on the on the uh, on the open market there, and then you can wait if you like until the minute we open the ICO and watch us put the sell order in and then watch the BitShares system magically start matching the orders at a pace you've never seen before. It's really, really cool. Hmm. And have you tried other systems before BitShares, or was this just straight up, you, you knew that this was the best way to go? I personally went straight to it when it was time to make the decision of what platform do we use. BitShares, funnily enough, was the, was the second cryptocurrency that I studied after I discovered Bitcoin like four or five years ago. So I studied Bitcoin, and then the next thing I stumbled on was BitShares. So I've got a very long history and a long and deep understanding of the of the platform. It's not the only platform I know about, of course. It's just that since then, I've not found a better tool 
for the job. So there you have it. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to capture the full interview because not only did one camera go down, but the second one I lost the footage to. My apologies, but still, hopefully that was enough to work with. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments section below. But if you'd like to reach out to the team members, one of the best ways to do that is either email or through Telegram. You are also able to go through Facebook or their other pages. They are real people. They have experience. I am fully confident going into this company and putting my reputation on the line. And also, it's not just me, but other big YouTubers as well, which I understand that may not mean a lot sometimes, depending on who you're speaking about. But Cryptoversity is a very reputable, and I thank Chris for his time and also Richard. If you guys would like to contribute, you're able to look at all the links down in the description below. Again, before you participate in this or any ICO, please make sure to do your own fair research. And once you feel fully comfortable with the funds, then hey, it's all up to you, but I'd encourage you guys to contribute. My name is Mike, or Kubera. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any suggestions on how to improve further videos, please do let me know. Again, I have turned off the mid-roll ads throughout this video. I do want everybody to try and soak up as much knowledge as they could. If you guys have any more questions, feel free to reach out, and we shall see you guys tomorrow. Peace out. Have a good one.